This video will discuss the graphical solution to Electrocomp Corporation's problem. Their problem is to determine the product mix of air conditioners and large fans that will maximize profit given their current resources. Their decision variables are the number of air conditioners produced and the number of large fans produced. The objective function is their profit function. $25 times each X1 produced plus $15 times each X2 produced. They have two constraints, a wiring time constraint and a drilling time constraint. For each of these, the resources that they use has to be less than or equal to the resources available. We want to solve this problem using the graphical method in Excel. We we'll start with the blank worksheet. And we have a column for each decision variable. We need to list the requirements for each resource. And we need to list the available amount of each resource. For each air conditioner, it takes three hours of wiring and one and two hours of drilling. For each large fan, it takes two hours of wiring and one hour of drilling. There are 240 wiring hours available, 140 drilling hours available. The profit for each air conditioner is 25. The profit for each large fan is 15. These are assumptions of the problem. I'm going to shade the space where I've entered the assumptions a different color just to indicate that this is where I want to update assumptions if I ever get updates. The decision variable for this problem are the units produced for each of the products. I'll have a, a cell for each decision variable and to start with I'll just enter a starting value for each decision variable. For instance I could start with 10. Eventually we're going to change the values of these decision variables to try to improve the profit. Next, I need two lines where I'm going to calculate the amount used of each of the resources. The amount of wiring hours used for air conditioners will be the decision variable X1 times three hours for each air conditioner. So this formula is three times X1. I'll put a dollar sign in front of the row 6 because then I can copy this formula. With the dollar sign in front of row 6, I can copy this formula to the right. And notice that the formula is now 2 from cell C2 times X2. So the entire left-hand side of the constraint is 3 times X1. plus 2 times x2, so I need to total these two values. This represents the entire amount of the resource used. This amount needs to be less than or equal to the resource available. I'll enter a cell reference up to the 240 hours available for wiring now. Because I have a dollar sign or absolute reference on row 6, 
which represents the decision variable x2, I can copy this formula down. And now the result is 2 for drilling hours times x1. If I copy this formula to the right, the result is 1 for drilling hours times x2. If I copy the sum formula down, I now sum the total drilling hours used. Notice that if we change the units produced, the total number of the resources used change. We want to do some testing at this point to make sure these are updating when we change the units produced. The total drilling hours used needs to be less than or equal to the total available, which I enter as a cell reference. Now we'll have a line that represents the objective function. The objective function states that 25 times x1 is the profit contributed by the air conditioners. 15 times x2 is the profit contributed by the large fans. If we sum these two, we get the total profit. And the objective of the problem is to maximize the total profit. Because this will be the objective, we're going to shade it a different color. We could now experiment with values in the decision variable cells to try to increase profit, but stay within the constraints. Excel has a built-in tour tool called Solver that will help us to do this. To add in Solver, you would go to File, Options, Add-ins, and click Manage Excel Add-ins and Go. My Solver add-in is already checked, but if yours is not, you would check the box for Solver add-in and click OK. Solver will now show up at the, on the data rib ribbon at the far right. The first thing that needs to be entered into Solver is the objective. That will be my orange shaded cell, the total profit cell. We want to maximize this, so we leave the, bot the radio button for max highlighted. There are some problems where we may want to minimize an objective like cost. The changing variable cells are the decision variables. In this case, the units produced of each product. Since these two constraints are listed on consecutive rows, and they both have the same inequality, we can enter these in one constraint box by clicking Add and Solve. The total resources used on the left side, the total resources available on the right side. We have non-negativity constraints in this problem. These can be added by simply checking the box to make unconstrained variables non-negative. For the problem we're doing right now, we want to use the simplex LP solving method with LP standing for linear program. This will be very important to select the correct method so that you produce the correct sensitivity report. We're ready to go ahead and solve the problem. We notice the solution is to produce 40x1, 60x2, and the total profit is 1900. 
In some cases, we'll want to produce a sensitivity report, and to do that, we would click on Sensitivity in the Reports section, and then click OK. The Sensitivity Report will show up as a separate tab in the Excel workbook. 